Yo, 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 what up, though, man? Got legends in the building. Legendary Doughboy Cash Out Dre. What's up, my guy? Absolutely. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good, man. Welcome to Mogul State of Mind, man. I appreciate you coming and sitting with like me, man. Name, Mogul State of Mind. Yeah, bro. I um, love that. You know, do you feel like with Doughboy Cash Out, all that y'all contributed to the scene in Detroit, man, do you feel like y'all y'all get the love and the, and, the, and the respect that y'all just do for what y'all done? Uh huh. It's like, um, I say it's, it's like 50-50 because mm. I, I had this discussion all the time with different people all the time. Like, do y'all always get y'all flowers? But some people give them to us, some of them don't. Yeah. But the ones who do give them to us, you know, we appreciate it. But at the end of the day, you know, we inspire a lot of people. Is it important, though, for you as an artist to get your flowers, though? Huh? I mean, I've been learning, like, Cause I'm so self motivated. If I'm doing good I, and I know I'm uh, my support, I don't really care with nobody else. Uh, if people support or show love or not, I got people who does. And they some great powerful people. So yeah, you know, now you, good. Now y'all West Side, right? Yeah, what, West Side, what West Detroit, Side? born and raised, Linwood. Linwood. Yeah, okay. but I uh, I lived on Seven Mile. Okay. Uh, so man, give me the upbringing, man. And how did you get into music? Like, what was the start of the music? Uh, honestly, uh, messing with my uh uncle. He uh down in Atlanta. He from Detroit, but he moved down to Atlanta like in uh like when it was the nineteen. It was I think it was like ninety six Olympics. Yeah. When they had the Olympics down there, so we used to go down there every summer. Me and my cousins, my brother, and. Basically, he that was his dream. Like mm. he was in a group called Triplex. Okay. And um, you know, at a young age, I was like nine years old. He have us like, uh, you know, make a rap, and I'm gonna come back in an hour and recite it to us. And we'd just be like, you know, me and my cousin, we chilling. We like, man, we ain't trying to rap down here. We trying to go outside and play. <laughs> but I be looking back on it like, uh, actually, kind of helped. You know, being that I'm dealing with the music, like yeah. putting words together, memorizing sentences, and enhancing my vocabulary. So, so take me through the origin of a Doughboy Cash Out. How the name came about, and who who were the original members of it? Um, Doughboys. Um, you know, I'm an original member. Clay, uh, Long Live Rock. My man's Keys. Uh, B. Smith is. We was originally dope boys, and we went to um, Southfield and um, cash out. That was more or less like pay kid, uh, Chaz. Yeah. Uh, but pay went to Southfield in ninth grade. Me and him had a class together. Okay. But, uh, that's how I kind of intertwined. We all was cool. Then they went to Oak Park, and they was crispy. We was crispy. At the time, they was getting a lot of controversy. Like, a lot of people was, like, at them, you know. So, uh, it kind of intertwined good, you know. It was cool. Like, it worked out. Like, we definitely made a lot of history together. Like, from even looking back then, like, we was just playing and just trying to buy, like, gym shoes yeah. and stuff and trying to cardies and stuff. So Yeah. And then just take it to another level and actually getting a uh, record deal and traveling and meeting a lot of people is, you know, it was a blessing. And so you end up having a brother that passed away, right? Yeah. Kind of take me through that and, and like what your brother mean meant to you and just fond memories, bro. Oh, man, everything, man. My heart, like I say, man, um, forever fresh, you know, um, you know that once he passed away, then you know that was a piece of me. You know that's my everything. But you know that's my motivation of the day. Like I got a, a nonprofit organization. Mm. It's called the Fabra Fresh. Uh, excuse me, the Fabra Fresh Foundation. And what we do, we do in our neighborhood on Linwood, like between um, Lin, um, LaSalle and uh, well, no, 14th and uh, um, 12th. It's a park up there. You know, they redevelop all the parks yeah. in the city. So I do a, uh, we do like an annual giveaway. Like last year we gave away like 50 bikes. 
hygiene products, um, like free haircuts, free food. So we're going to do it again over there this year. Okay. So um, I just try to just stay motivated, man, and just keep his legacy alive. Like I got a, a nephew now. Yeah. So, um, you know, that just be my motivation, man. Like just to keep going, you know, go even harder. Can you give me a little bit of like, how, how did you find out he passed? Like, and what was the cause for those uh, who ain't know? I mean, I was there. It was um, it was actually a journey we was going through. Um, he was diagnosed with um cancer. Oh man! Like uh, the beginning, like this was like the beginning of twenty twenty, like before the pandemic even hit, and we was like um, man, it was. It was it was a crazy man situation man, but it was like um it's a beautiful journey like we had went to um we were staying in San Diego, and he was getting treatment over in uh, Tijuana, mm. so you we across the border we go to San Diego, and we across the border and he was going to like a um, less aggressive chemotherapy, but um yeah man cancer is um. It's serious, man, and it's a lot of younger people getting it now. Like stuff older people used to get, it's a lot of younger people getting it. So, uh, you know, I be encouraged, and that's what the uh, foundation about uh, being more health conscious. That's real. You know, especially in the minorities, like we got to eat better. Like uh, he had colon cancer, and a lot of people man. be saying that come from like what we eat. Like I don't eat pork, red meat. Try to stay away uh, from sugar, but everything got sugar yeah. in it. So I just say try to uh, eat stuff in moderations. So um, how old was he? Um, man, t- young, twenty eight. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm man. sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, man. So um, yeah, so we just try to, and, and it's so crazy the whole time he ain't. I never seen my brother like cry about it or nothing. We was just trying to figure out a solution. And um, that's the reason why I did the foundation because it was actually his idea because what we had learned in our journey maybe can help the next person. Yeah. So he was, you know, a leader. You know what I'm saying? Forever fresh. So. Hey man, rest in peace to him, man. Oh, absolutely. Um, for, for the group, we all were one of the first groups out of the city to get signed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of take me through that, like, the, that success to get to that point. Um, um, just hard work, really. Like, um, I always remember what uh, T.I. said one time. We was down in Atlanta. Uh, we had went down there to mess with him. And, um, like he was saying, like, and I kind of, like, see a lot of artists do that now. Because everybody want, like, instant gratification. Because you see the next person, yeah. what they doing prosper. You think they can do the same for you. And, like, T.I. was saying, like, um... Actually, like, when you actually putting the work in and you hot, you ain't got to go searching. They going to come find you. For sure. So, that's how they did us. So what, I just tell people just keep working. What, what do you feel like it was that moment? What was the breakthrough moment or the breakthrough song for y'all that you felt like caught everybody's attention? Uh-uh. Man, we had so many. Like, I was just talking to the one young dog outside. Uh, I would say maybe... uh. What'd you say? Probably, uh, dog hoes. Yeah. I ain't know if we can cuss. No, you could. Yeah, we cussing. It's a Christian okay, channel. Right, 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 right. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> right, because I know dog was cussing like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, probably dog hoes. And, um, man, we actually had a lot, man, because a lot of people like some of the first stuff, like, um, uh, Man, we got so many hits, man. Like, Flooded With Ice, that was like one of our first songs. With, yeah. uh, it was like a Blade remake. Gotcha. And uh, my man's We, he had put it on, uh, what was that, Crush Spot or something? It was way back then. So, yeah, probably one of them songs. Uh, I, I, I don't take this the wrong way, but I need you to be 100% on this <laughs> next question. Do you feel like, HBK was the Beyonce of the group. <laughs> Who kid? I mean, no, I wouldn't say he was the Beyonce of the group, but at one point in time, and that's why I love my man's HB to this day, man. Shout out to HB, man. 
Because it was a point at time where labels was just coming at him. And yeah. they want to sign us as a whole. They wanted to just come get him. And he kind of was like, no, if y'all ain't messing with getting the whole team, I'm straight. So I commend him on that, man, with his peanut head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I interviewed an artist on um, Blood Raw. Oh yeah, Blood Raw. Blood Raw. That was G's. Uh, yeah, yeah. U- USDA, and he was talking about how him and Jeezy fell out, and how he was just forgot about, and how the the deal with USDA w- with Jeezy didn't work out. Right. Um, y'all was y'all signed to Jeezy, right? Yeah. Uh, what was that deal like, and what happened? Uh, well. You know, Dope Boys Cash Out, we had signed like a, um, it was a distribution through um, CTE. Okay. We would sign through Atlantic. Gotcha. So basically like how they do uh, what anybody would do, like management team or a company, uh, shop you to a, a label and get a finder's fee. So mm. basically that's what he did. So that's he shopped y'all and got his. Yeah. Because I think he had a position at Atlantic at that time, too. Do you feel like the deal was bad? I mean, I ain't going to say it was bad. Because I never say nothing bad because it would be good even in with bad. Because even though maybe we ain't... Because um, we was doing shows, getting like 5000 before we even signed. Yeah. So, like, we had lucrative deals on the floor. Like I said, we had TI. We had Universal, so... We just had one with Jeezy because he didn't have no team at that point, like a um, Rick Ross or like Birdman or, yeah. you know, like them type of labels. But um, it was actually great because a lot of people that I met through that time are actually um, still cool, have relationships with them. Like I was just kicking it with YG the other day. He doing his thing. He just came out with some shoes. Um a lot of people that was like executives and A and R's, they got like whole big positions at um, some of the top record labels. So it definitely put us on a bigger scale. So being like you hit that label, because you know, like most artists out here, I mean, that's the dream to get signed, and they think once you get signed, you made it, right. and not that not realizing that's when the work start. Absolutely. Um, but what do you think kept y'all from really getting to that next le- le- level, like pushing through? Like, you know, we see other rap groups, like you know, the Migos went to the, you know, blew up. Like, why, why weren't y'all the Migos? Right. Um, I would say more or less, um, just having that um, promotion and mm-hmm. marketing. Like, um, we were, like I said, we was independent for so long. So when we signed with him, it was more or less. Uh, Everything was moving so fast. Like, I had ended up catching the case, like, a month, like, after we had uh, signed the deal. So, it was just a lot going on around yeah. that time. Like, man, it went so quick. Like, yeah, my mind was going crazy. Like, damn, <laughs> we on BT 106 in part. Yeah. We on MTV. Then, um, like, certain little situations, I say, happened that kind of, like, um, Stopped us from getting to that point. No, for sure. Here it is, y'all. Y'all signed this label deal, and like you said, you you got a pretty much you signed Atlantic, right? Right. And you got a partnership or a distribution with Jeezy. Now, did y'all really get paid five thousand a piece? Is that that was the rumor out there <laughs> for the deal? <laughs> no, that one was so crazy, man. When that shit happened, man, I had all type of people. Uh, Hit me up, man. They was telling mom, oh, gee, she was calling me like, what you got? How much? I'm like, look, man, don't listen to none what nobody's saying. <laughs> but uh, we had more than 5000 More than five? Like I said, we was getting shows for 5000 like, Got you. You feel me? And we more or less, like I had to tell somebody that the other day, like, my goal, like how people want to just get deals, not, that wasn't my goals or dreams. Like, I'm an entrepreneur, like. You know, we always been hustlers. Yeah. So that was more or less just a business move. So um, it wasn't really about no money. So how much did y'all get? I ain't going to say what we got, but we got it. We damn near got it over half a million. Oh, damn, okay. So what's the first, what's the dumbest thing you blew on? Like, you look back like, God, God damn. Um, 
I ain't really blow no cheese. Oh, for real. Good. Like we was, you know, like I said, oh, well, when I caught my case, I had to spend like twenty thousand on the lawyer. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. So you gotta break down this for me, man. What happened with Team Eastside with the fight? Oh man, see, uh, I wasn't there, you know. My brother was there forever fresh. How the hell did Dow? You know what I'm saying? Low Lear Rock. Savage. <laughs> Held it down. Another cat was there. I ain't gonna say no name. And um, who else was down that bitch? Oh, and Kid. Mm. Which, like I said, at that time, you know, we we on fire. Yeah. You know, like how niggas got security not. I would really rather them niggas that had security or had an entourage with us. Cause yeah. you know, niggas was outnumbered. You know what I'm saying? Niggas what, what was, was it? What was it over? It was just ego, bravado? I mean, I would was... just say niggas was hating. You know, back then, you know, we weren't liked by a lot of people. You yeah. know, a lot of niggas doing their thing. Not salute. God is good, but I still remember when niggas was hating. You know what I'm saying? So it was that type of situation. But I know uh, some, I think Kid had gotten into it with one of them or something, but they already had knew each other. Yeah. A bunch of some bullshit for real, honestly. Did, did y'all have any impact on y'all after that that fight? Was there any impact y'all had to deal with? Was Man, it a- hell yeah. We was black boy. You know what I'm saying? We was black boy. And like you said, we wouldn't have been at the Migos. I still feel like, you know what I'm saying, niggas, like I say, it, it, it stopped a lot. Why you Why you think y'all black, black ball just from a fight, though? Because, man, it was like, it's just, that was the stigma we had at the mm-hmm. time, like, you know what I'm saying? Bad boys, Detroit bad boys, yeah. or some shit like that. But really, we good men. Like we take care of our family. We doing stuff for the community. You know what I'm saying? But that beef got squashed though. Everything. Yeah, good honestly, love. and the beef only got squashed because of me and kid. You know what I'm saying? We end up uh, seeing um, Snoop, rest in peace, Snoop, and um, Green got Rizzy. What's he? Rizzy and. Um, we was downtown. Long story short, uh, we end up, this is like the second time I end up seeing them. Because like I said, there will always be a situation like people will try to, like try to stop the controversy. Like if they had a party and we trying to come in, they'd be like, oh, woo, woo, and vice versa. So I was kind of like tired of that shit. I feel it. So um, Rizzy came up to me and was like, um, you know, kind of like we knew kind of the same kind of people, elaborated on that. And um, Kid and um, Snoop, they had talked because we it was a situation had happened. Um, we had, after the Cobo, we had ended up catching Snoop like at a strip club and situation happened. We had, you know, caught him slipping. Yeah. And they kind of elaborated on that. Like Snoop was like, basically like, yeah, y'all got off on me and we got off on y'all and kind of like, you know, it's kind of like just put it to a closure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what's up. So now that the beef is ended, would you want to see a, a Doughboy cash out versus, like a versus with East, uh, Team Eastside? Yeah, I want to see. I mean, I think that's what, because at the, I mean, it was because, like, the state that the city in right now is is, is good. It's, yeah. it's, like, healthy. Like, cause it ain't like too much divided. Like, you know, you got some of the youngest, they be doing, they beefing, but more than less than that, everybody trying to come together and trying to prosper and make it out of here. Yeah. So uh, I think it'd be good, you know what I'm saying? Especially if they, you know, we can make some money off of it. 10 songs, 10 for 10, what's the score, who win? Man, I mean, they got some hits, but we gonna fuck them boys over, though. You so what know what I'm saying? The they, gonna, they know it, though. Is it? Is it? Is it? What, uh, what would the score be? Uh, Six to four? What is it? Because I ain't gonna lie. Because uh, just like the uh, one guy would just ask me, because there's so much going on. Yeah. Like, even before we started music, it, everybody a rapper. And yeah. it's like, even more or less, that's times 10 and 9. So it'd be a lot to keep up with. Yeah. But I try to keep my ear to the music. Cause I love music, but um, I ain't heard a lot of their music. But they got a lot of they got a couple songs. I probably say I get them maybe two out of ten. Two out of ten, damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's I get them because we got some heat. Yeah. They know it. We, you know, it, at the end of the day, uh, 
you know, we influence everybody, yeah. even if they don't want to admit it. What do you think was the influence? What What do you feel like people were able to take from y'all and begin to use it for themselves to grow the scene? Man, just being uh, independent and black and, yeah. you know, doing it, really seeing people like we really pulling through in them cars and really wearing what people talk about. So I think that'd be kind of better when you can see it then more or less than somebody talking about it. So yeah. I think that was kind of good more or less for us, but we was just having fun. And so we know like in, in the industry, we see what Kanye went through, but you was talking about the Jews on the media, that it's always some type of controlling influence. Some people may say Illuminati run stuff, things of that nature. So I, I don't want to be insensitive with this question, but I do want to pick your brain about this. So, like, the the passing of Rock. Rock. Yeah. Okay. And then payroll getting the deal right after that. And you got people who were actually running around to say he was sacrificed to the Illuminati. Right. It's like, so crazy. It be so much crazy shit. I, didn't, I, I seen that. Somebody sent that to my phone. That shit funny as hell, but... You know, I don't, that ain't true. But uh, I definitely see that. And they try to break it down to a science. Yeah. But uh, I definitely believe it may be, I ain't going to speak on that, but it may be be a, a, higher, a higher power. Yeah. You know, it's definitely be secret um, groups because it be like the government, they the mob. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it definitely be group. So you feel like the government was looking down on y'all? I mean, but do you really? Well, I'll tell you back. Do you really think Illuminati exists, though? Do you think it's some shadow group that's just in the yeah, back? I know it's it's a group of elites. It's definitely a group of elites. And yeah. Like, and you ain't gonna know about it unless you're in that tax bracket. Yeah. Got you. So like, where where's Doughboy Cash out doing? Like, cause you know, pay payroll, right? Yeah. He's he doing like a lot of movies. He's into the film side of things. Like, where are y'all staying right now as far as coming back doing more music and things of that nature? Uh -huh. We actually been, um, like I said, since the brother, um, since the passing of my brother, Rock, man, and Josh, you know, we've been working on music. Yeah. Like, we posted Ben dropped a um, group tape. Mm. But I just feel like it's timing. Like we got over fifty songs. Like some of the songs we actually done have done have been on um like pay couple of his last tapes. Yeah. Uh my man's Keith just dropped the tape. One of the uh songs we did for was supposed to be on the group tape on his latest project. Yeah. So, you know, I just be like, man, put it out, man, cause we got some heat. Like we got a lot of uh, great material. So, uh I'm working on some stuff. Yeah, I see that you you was just in the movie. Yeah, I was just in the movie. Kind of talk well, about the movie, man. man. You got good reviews, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, man. On. Yeah, man. I can get my Denzel. Yeah, you can get it on. It's like, no, but for real, <laughs> though, man. That was kind of like, and that's crazy. I just seen a lady, uh, I ain't tell you, I was on Seven Mile, but uh, I be seeing a lot of people, because uh, it's funny, like, people know me from music, but not people know me from acting. Yeah. Like, like, I just seen an older lady. She was like, I just seen you in a movie. So that was kind of funny. I'm like, damn. <laughs> but yeah, Tubi big. Yeah. yeah. Make it out. Go see it. It's on Tubi streaming right now. It's a great movie. Uh, directed by a young uh, producer, Buck. He's actually from Seven Mile. Plus Productions. They doing great things. They got the Dirty D series. They Man, they, they working, man. It's yeah. beautiful. And, like, I was just so grateful for the opportunity. And, actually, because he was like, Dre, uh, I want you. Because I never did no acting, for real. Yeah. Like, I might have did one little hood, <laughs> like, scene. Like, yeah, nigga, this. I think I was in Snake, one little movie. But it wasn't nothing like that. Yeah. It was just a quick look. Like, this was a real script. I had to do, like, some one-on-one -on -one classes. Yeah. Oh, man, it was so crazy. And they had gave me, like, the script, like, two weeks before we actually started filming. And I kind of was like... Damn. Yeah, but it was like... I like to challenge myself, so it was like a good challenge for me. And it was great to work with a lot of great art... I mean, uh, actors like this guy named Denzel, King James, Chris, 
um, Kiva, um, the one girl, Stevie J, uh, Baby Mama, Mimi mm-hmm. Foss was in there. So it was dope, man. It was fun. If if, if you had a choice of an act, well, let me. How can I phrase this? If it come to acting. And they want you to move you as a lead, but you have to choose between either being have to play a gay character, <laughs> or you have to dress up like a woman and play kind of like a Medea type of character. <laughs> but which one would you pick? Man, I ain't gonna lie. To that. See, now nah, that's kind of overdoing it. See, because um, but like the greats did, Eddie Murphy did it, Martin did yeah, it. Yeah, all of them do it, but some of the great actors ain't do it though. And yeah. a lot of them ain't do it because that's kind of like if you want to say like Illuminati, yeah, that's what they, you know, you got to kind of do all that type of stuff. I'm yeah. a man, I ain't gonna try to. So, but you got to pick between one of the two. Which one? Oh man, you say pick between? Yeah. Oh man, you say what was that again? You say you got to play either a gay role in a movie. Oh no, I ain't playing. No or gay you got to like wear a dress like you know, say like be a, like a Medea type of figure in a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do neither one. I can't, I can't, I can't be gay, and I can't, cause I be seeing. But that's you so crazy. Get, See, I ain't gonna get too deep into it, cause you know I'm on the whole intellectual level and like higher power. Yeah, and you know that's what they try to do to the black male race. They want us like it's look it up on YouTube. Like back in the '70s, they like by this time it's gonna be like, cause as a man we supposed to reproduce. Yeah. And it's a lot of like, you know, do what you want to do, but it's a lot of like same sex. And we supposed to reproduce, especially as the black men. And they were saying like the media and culture going to try to dumb down the black men and have them wearing dresses and wigs and makeups. And I mean, but we seen stuff. white people do it too, right? We didn't see Seinfeld did it. We didn't see um, all the great Mrs. Did. Doubtfire. But um, that's what it, if you want to get to that level, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I guess, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, I just don't want to play that role. You can't, you can't. But I will play a serious role, like, because I've been getting, like, like I say, since doing that movie, I kind of been getting a lot of couple opportunities, and I hope, like, my next role be something, like, serious, like yeah. a teacher or uh, a coach or just something challenging other than, like, some hood shit. You got know? you. Well, I tell you what, man. Shout out to you and your journey, bro. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you, brother. No, man. I appreciate Y'all you. doing great things with this, man. It's a pleasure to be on this, man. Hey, man. Well, salute, bro. Hopefully, we can continue to link in the future, man. Absolutely, man. Hey, well, shoot. Dope boy, cash out, Dre, man. Until we meet again. Absolutely. Peace.